Hello, everyone. Um, so as of me recording this now, um, Neptunia Virtual Stars came out yesterday, and I have put about two hours and 45 minutes into the game, and, um, I think I'm at a level now where I can give it, like, a, um, a first impression type of thing, so I'm gonna try to keep this short so I can, uh, you know, put this on Twitter and whatever, and, um, let's just see what I think of the game. <clears throat> The game is fun, but frustrating. And I mean very frustrating. So when I first got into the game, it has taken me around um, 35 minutes to actually get into the game to play for a little bit. And then the next 10 minutes to actually get to an enemy. And I'll, I'll get into that stuff later. But in terms of the controls and stuff, the controls... Um, at first when I tried playing in that, were actually, you know, they, they were kind of weird, but I did like it. I did like how the shoulder button can be used as a shoot button as well, along with the square button, which, um, I don't recommend using the square button because if you use the square button, then you can't move your little, um, your little R stick. So that becomes a lot more harder to just aim in general. But, um, the control, when I say the controls are whack, I mean, when I first tried them out and I didn't know there was a lock on system, it was very... Very, very frustrating to hit enemies, especially when you're playing as Blonde. Um, when I was first playing as Blonde, there was this one segment where I missed every single one of my shots, and then I got three shots in, but that was enough to kill literally every enemy that I saw. And again, it wasn't until I found out there was a lock-on system, and I only figured this out after I played the VTubers, who, for whatever reason, their name is Me and You, and it took me some time, but I decided to try that out with the uh, Blonde to see if there was a lock-on system. And to my surprise, yes, but it kind of sucks. The lock-on system, the way this works is that um, your camera zooms in and Blonde kind of positions herself. And I, I say Blonde because, you know, she's my favorite CPU and I that's the character I play the most. She positions herself in the... Um, the bottom left corner and she takes up a third of the screen you there's like these and it, it's basically it's zoomed in and when an enemy gets close to this reticle you have the reticle locks onto them now one hand that that that's pretty good however there's a catch two things number one when the reticle locks onto them the only way the reticle can lock onto them is that they are touching the reticle now, there's this little box that the reticle is in, and, I, and it, it should work that the reticle, or when they're in that box, they, the reticle should lock onto them, but no. It's if they are touching the reticle, that then the reticle will actually lock onto them and stay onto them. And number two, this one I hate the most, and I only figured this out, and this only, this seems to only apply with Blonde, since she's the uh, slow fire rate type of uh, character. Um, when the reticle locks onto them, Sometimes, your shots don't even hit. And when I say, like, okay, so when a reticle locks onto an enemy, that ideally should mean your shots should go to that reticle. I don't know if it's just Blonde, but that's not the case at all. Blonde's shots sometimes don't even go to that reticle at all. And I don't know if it's because of my timing, or if it's because I'm too impatient, or if it's actually the game that's causing the reticle to just miss a lot of the time. So, I think the lock-on system should be adjusted just a little bit to be more adjustable. Not saying that you can't get used to it, which I have, but it's frustrating at first. And if you're me, who played a couple of um, hack and slash games that involved lock-on systems, or has played Splatoon in general, I think the lock-on system is kind of bad. Unless there's like some gyro control system where... With the, uh, like, let's just say when you, uh, with the PS4 controller, there's, like, some motion control like there is with the, uh, the Pro Controller. Where, you know, in Splatoon 2, you know, when you move your controller, you move the camera angle, and it, and in Splatoon 2, it actually works spectacularly, not gonna lie. And it's the best way to actually play the game, use motion controls, and I, I very much recommend it. But if there was that, if there's something like that implemented in Virtual Stars, which I don't know how they're gonna do that, since Virtual Stars... Just from playing it, seems to run at either 30 frames or lower. I don't know how they're going to work out a lock-on system when, you know, in Splatoon 2, um, it consistently, consistently runs at 60 frames a second. Um, 
I'm just gonna talk as like both of them at the same time. The soundtrack and the cutscenes, I don't really care about them, I'll just say. So, what is it? The soundtrack, as of me playing like 2 hours and 45 minutes into the game, I have only heard one soundtrack for when I was in the hub, when I was facing against enemies, when I was exploring places, and occasionally some of the cutscenes. Um, and then like maybe like three soundtracks during the bosses. All the bosses I played so far, which is three of them, uh, two of them being repeats. I do like the soundtrack, but when I hear it over and over and over again, I would rather it be playing something else, right? There is one soundtrack that I know that plays when you're fighting against enemies and you're in the hub, and there's three others when you're um playing against the bosses and stuff. And in the cutscenes, um, now this could just be the fact that I played a lot, and I mean a lot, of Devil May Cry 3 and 5, where when you get into the cutscenes, um, you can either skip them right away, or you could watch them, and um, the cutscenes are not that long. That's what I was trying to say. When I say cutscenes, I'm talking about like the visual novel type of stuff with the game in general. So in the beginning, it was fine, but the beginning cutscene in total until you actually get into the gameplay. And this is something I also have against pretty much any Neptunia game I've actually played. The cutscenes are way, way too long. So the first cutscene, when I finally got to play, you know, for the first time, was somewhere around like 40 minutes until I actually played for like two minutes to get into another cutscene that took up what feels like five to ten minutes of my time just to get to this part where this auntie was making fun of the uh, goddess as like, haha, Neptune, you're lazy, Nuvar, you're so lonely, Nuvar, uh, blah, and you're bad at writing, and Ver, uh, someone has a big chest in you. But um, those cutscenes take way too long, and those cutscenes happen in the middle of the gameplay. So let me compare, let me do some compare whatever type of thing. Devil May Cry 5 has sort of has a lot of cutscenes and they do have cutscenes in the middle of the gameplay but the reason why they have cutscenes in the middle of the gameplay is because they actually progress with something so there's this one mission where i was playing as this one character who literally was like physically dematerializing and there's this one part where he falls down and it seems like he's dematerializing like altogether. but then in that cutscene they like kind of like vaguely show off this character or this boss that you're going to face in another mission and then um you get and then you just teleport into this one area that cutscene mind you took up exactly a minute probably a cutscene like that from when i played in the neptunia superstars or virtual stars usually would be like five minutes or ten minutes oh, okay to be frank some of the cutscenes are funny and well, okay, I think part of that also has to do with the fact that the game does not have an English dub at all. It's only English sub. That's one of the things that was kind of like, kind of worry about playing um, Virtual Stars is that if, is, if um, you know, because there's VTubers, I was wondering um, how playing or what was it? How... English voice actually would work. I thought it would be like a thing where for some reason they would only give, they would like only give the main characters the English voice acting and then they would probably give like one or two, maybe even a couple handful more VTubers some English dubbing. Like, um, with, um, that one VTuber, like, what was, what was her name? Like, girl, girl, like, you know, the shark one, you know, whatever, how she has an English voice and stuff. I thought they would do that, but instead of doing that, they just went with, Everyone is Japanese. And at first I thought, okay, that is cute. I do like some of the Japanese voices, especially Noir's. But the more and more I got into the game, um, the more I started becoming frustrated with it. And there were actually moments where I actually legitimately either A, was on my phone looking at Twitter and whatever, B, um, actually left to go get some water for myself, or C, I skipped the cutscene altogether. And there was a fair few of them I actually skipped. And again, I think part of that is because it is in Japanese and there's no English voices whatsoever. 
So it's not like a thing where I could just, you know, kind of not pay attention, but also hear what they're saying as well and kind of get some insight what's going on, despite the fact that I think I know what's going on by just not even looking at the cutscenes and kind of just progressing through the game or just looking at the beginning cutscene as a whole. But I just found the cutscenes, especially the breakup, because it breaks up the pacing a lot. And again, this applies for like any Neptunia game in general. I found that to be really frustrating. Another thing I found to be really frustrating, and this is the last thing I'm going to touch on, are the bosses. The bosses are way too hard. And I'm not saying that like I'm bad. I, okay, as a bit of a reference again, I, okay. I think why I think the bosses are hard is because I have the wrong idea of how to dodge them. Uh, again, I have played Devil May Cry 3 and Devil May Cry 5 so much, and they have this mechanic, or this, uh, this implemented, where when you jump in those games, you have invincibility frames. So jumping was literally the number one, or for me at least, the number one best method to dodging anything and everything. So I implemented that in Neptunia Stars, and obviously that has led to me getting killed a numerous amount of times. It only works against enemies since a lot of the enemies sent, sent, tend to attack on the ground like those little like snake things which also have some weird hit boxes or hurt boxes which all enemies do in general but when i tried doing that against the bosses especially the first one where he kind of slashes at you like really fast i got hit all the time and i found that to be frustrating and it took a while but the best way that i found to dodge bosses is to or at least the first one was to boost or step underneath them like right through them which is you know to me really strange how that is the best way to dodge an enemy by boosting into them um unless you're playing as the goddesses you can just boost away from them but even then sometimes that won't work because the boss will actually legitimately just chase you and uh, when i say boss i'm talking about the first boss um but yeah the second boss was unreasonably difficult now i didn't die to the second boss but i was close and what I found strange about the second boss is not, not just the fact that the hurt box is kind of all over the place where I feel like I am, my aiming reticle is on the enemy, on the boss, and my shots just miss for whatever reason because it has a strange hurt box for some odd reason. I don't know what's the case, but it, the hurt box kind of just doesn't exist for whatever reason. And it was until later, like halfway through the boss, I, when I was trying to figure out how to avoid the, uh, this one attack that the, he does where he charges an attack and he creates this giant shockwave that I am confident to say is not dodgeable and you will get hit by it, I accidentally double jump into what I assume is the out of bounds arena. And in the out of bounds arena, the boss could not touch me. He could not shoot at me. I mean, he could shoot at me, but all the shots would just miss. He could not, you know, spin around at lightning speeds at me because then he would just get, you know, he was still in the the big giant circle that you would be on the stage. He literally could not get to me at all. So I was completely invincible. Not entirely because he'd still have that one attack where it, you, you just can't dodge it, I swear. And, um... Unless there's like some block button that I didn't pay attention to. That's, okay, that's another thing. Okay, I think I've covered the bosses, and that's another thing I don't like about the Neptunia games. They feed you way too much info and expect you to use it right away. And I think that's the, and I, I think that might be the point of why they feed you a lot of info, but I don't like that. I don't like how they feed you so much info to such a level where there are some mechanics I swear I don't remember. Like, I, okay, I remember there's this one mechanic where if you're emotional, or gauge whatever thing goes up and you're the goddesses you can um you can go to this um goddess mode or you can hdd form and you do these attacks that does a lot of damage to the enemies and and when i say enemies i mean all the enemies but i don't know how that works because they said they also said things like you know sound something or whatever and in the boss arenas they said if you do that you get teleported to the special area and i tried that with the second boss and i have no idea what that does no idea what it's for, no idea why, it, if anything, at least in the second boss, I think that was a disadvantage because, again, during the second boss, there's this one area where the boss could not touch me at all. So I thought the special areas were 
pointless, at least to me, especially with, again, with the whole controls being whack and sometimes hurt boxes of enemies being a little all over the place. And when I say all over the place, I mean very thin. <laughs> like, like very thin. Like, I cannot hit the snake dudes for my life. Okay. Um, I know there's a lot of negative things I had to say about the game. Again, this is just a first impression, so don't take this as a, oh, I think the game is bad. Just take this as a, what I found frustrating with the game at first. The, again, I have played the game for the first two hours and 45 minutes, and um, I'll more than likely find some interesting things about the game. And, you know, whatever. So, that was my first impression, and um, now, excuse me, I have some lunch. And I was supposed to, you know, be eating that, and it's probably cold right now, because I've been recording this for 17 minutes already. So, catch you later, guys.